Hey guys, it's Jill. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. So today we are going to be doing six new crock pot dinner ideas. I have six new dump and go crock pot dinner ideas for you guys that I hope that you truly enjoy. We're going to be doing a meatloaf. We're going to be doing some ribs. We're going to be doing some pork chops and some chicken. So I hope that you guys are super excited. I know I am. If you guys are new here, please subscribe. Click the notification bell so you guys are always notified of every single upload. Give this video a big thumbs up. And comment down below what is your favorite crock pot meal for the summer because I would love to make some delicious summery crock pot meals because it is heating up and it is heating up very quick. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this video. For our first dump and go crock pot meal, we are making ribs and I am so incredibly excited for this. So what you're gonna need is one onion chopped, some garlic, half a cup of water. You're going to need three to four pounds of ribs. Now, if you want them with the bones, I tried to find those, I could not find those. These were the only ribs that I found. So these are the country style ribs, or the pork shoulder butt. <laughs> so they are boneless, and they are kind of like a thick piece of meat. So we're gonna do this instead of the bone baby back ribs but you can use whatever you choose. So this is the little rub mixture and in here I have one tablespoon of brown sugar, three-fourths of a teaspoon of garlic powder, three-fourths of a teaspoon onion powder, half a teaspoon pepper, half a teaspoon lemon pepper, half a teaspoon of salt. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the rub and we're gonna rub the ribs with the seasoning. I'm going to put the onion on the bottom of the crock pot with some garlic. I'm going to put the ribs in and then we're going to uh, put the half a cup of water in there and then you want to cook these on low for eight hours or high for four hours. I'm kind of getting a late start. It is currently 1149. So what I'm going to do is cook it on high for a couple of hours and then turn it down to low because I want them super tender and super delicious. Um, I wish I would have was able to cook them earlier. But let's go ahead and get started with rubbing our meat and then we're going to drop everything into the crock pot and let it cook. So that is what the ribs look like after they have been cooking. I added some barbecue sauce. This is an unnecessary step, but it's a step that I highly recommend because they were good coming out of the crock pot. But when you put barbecue sauce on them and put them in the oven on broil, they just become magic. They like caramelize and oh, it's just, it's literally, I'm looking at this footage going, oh my gosh, these were so good. I want them again. They were delicious. I highly, highly, highly recommend this. And I also highly recommend that you do not skip the barbecue sauce and then the broil part. I mean, look at these ribs. They are so delicious and so good. I broiled mine for about five minutes. They could have gone a little bit longer, but just depending on your oven is how, and also how you like them, is how long you should cook them on broil. So here is my plate. I'm so excited for this. We have the ribs, then I have some barley, which I meal prepped today, along with some cucumber and tomato salad, and some roasted veggies. So I'm gonna go chow down on this, and I will see you guys tomorrow, for tomorrow's dump and go dinner. Okay, so tonight we're having like a smothered pork chop, and what you're gonna need are four thick bone-in pork chops. When you cook pork chops in the crock pot, it's best to have them thick. So we've got four of those. We are going to be using half a teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon garlic powder, half teaspoon onion powder, one tablespoon of olive oil, salt, pepper, 
one onion slice, which I haven't done that yet, but I will. Uh, two cups, two cups of sli sliced mushrooms. My mushrooms ended up going bad, so that's not going to be in there. But I really wanted them in there. <laughs> Unfortunate. Anyways, one can of cream of mushroom, one can of cream of chicken, three fourths cup of beef broth, which I have right here. So what we're going to do, and again, if you literally want this to be dump and go, just dump all this stuff in the crock pot and call it a day. But I'm going to go ahead and sear this meat. And then we're also going to um, use the bits on the bottom to put this and kind of like scrape it all together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because searing is going to give it more flavor. Okay, so it's been seven hours and this is what they look like. They look delicious and it smells delicious. So I'm gonna show you what we're having this with and what they look like all plated up. Okay, so here is our dinner. I just have some, why is the lighting all messed up? I just have some rice here. I cooked it in the beef broth that was left over that I did not use uh, for the little gravy and then we just have some green beans on the side these were like literally falling apart like, i don't know if you guys can see that they're so tender another thing that i just thought of that would be amazing on this would be to add some ranch while you are cooking uh the little gravy that would be so 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 good i love ranch and pork chops so as you can see there's ava's and hers like completely fell apart but yeah we are gonna go enjoy this, and I will see you guys tomorrow for our next Dump and Go Crock-Pot meal. Okay, so for this Dump and Go Crock-Pot meal, I'm so incredibly excited about this. This is going to be Dump and Go chicken, Mississippi chicken. Okay, so if you guys know and have watched my videos before, especially my Crock-Pot videos, you guys know I make the Mississippi uh, pot roast a lot. My family loves it. It's just a family staple. We go crazy for it. But a lot of you have been telling me to try it with chicken and I was like, oh, that's genius. So we're going to go ahead. We have some, we have three pounds of chicken breast in the crock pot and super simple ingredients. Not very many. You're going to need an onion packet from Lipton or, you know, Walmart makes theirs too. It's the onion soup packet. So you're going to need one of those, just pop that over the top, oh, it smells delicious already. You're going to need a packet of ranch, I believe that four tablespoons equals, 
which I'm gonna need my other one. But four tablespoons equals a packet. Let me go get my other one. Okay, then the original original recipe calls for one full stick of butter, but then again, you guys were like, you really don't need that much butter. And so lately I've been making it with just half a stick of butter and it's correct, you really don't need a stick. Um, it's just as flavorful. And then you're going to need some pepperoncinis. So many of you have asked, are the pepperoncinis, like does it make it spicy? And I always say no, like absolutely no spice. But then I realize that sometimes it can be a tad bit spicy. My kids don't like spice. I really don't like spice either. But if you are concerned, just add like four, like one right here, one right here, one right here, one right here. You'll still get the flavor of it, but you won't get any kind of spice whatsoever. All you have to do from here is just obviously put the lid on it and get your little base. Plug her in. And I'm gonna go ahead and cook this on low. I'm gonna try for seven hours. So it's been about six hours and this is what this beauty looks like. It smells insanely delicious. It smells just like the, what's it called? The Mississippi Pot Roast, only as we stated earlier, it's chicken. So I'm just gonna take this little thing. By the way, you guys always ask about this thing. It is linked down in my Amazon store, which is linked down below. So I'm just gonna kind of shred this up. What I'm gonna do with this today is actually put these on some rolls and have it as a little sandwich. And there you go. It smells really, really, really good. I'm thinking, however, I probably don't like the chicken as much. Okay, so this recipe is incredibly simple. It is Olive Garden chicken pasta. So all you're gonna need is one and a half pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast. You're going to need an entire 16 ounce container of Olive Garden Italian dressing. I opted for the light Italian dressing, but you can go with the full fat if you would like. We're gonna need some pepper. We're going to need one block of cream cheese. I have the one third less fat cream cheese and then you're also going to need a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese literally just gonna dump everything in here um, and then from there we're going to cook pasta when it's done but I'm gonna do that on the stove if you don't want this with pasta you can totally forego that this and then just do the chicken um, but yeah we are going to cook this on high for four hours or cook it on low for five to six so let's go ahead and start putting our ingredients in here. Like I said, I'm gonna turn it on low and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So this has been cooking, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's been actually cooking for seven hours on low. And this is what it looks like, you guys. It smells insanely delicious. This is 
perfection. So what I'm gonna do now is add a whole box of, what is this, rotini, rigatoni, I can't remember what I made. But basically a box of pasta. Here is my plate. I just have some roasted vegetables on the side that I roasted with my meal prep this week. So if you guys wanna see that video, I will link it down below. But this, we're gonna go eat and I cannot wait because like I said, it smells delicious. It looks delicious. And oh my gosh, I will see you guys tomorrow for dump and go crock pot meal number three. For this crock pot meal, I'm making something I never thought you could make in a crock pot and that's going to be meatloaf. So what you're going to need is two pounds of ground beef. I have um, the leanest. I can't remember, it's like the one that has eight grams of fat. So I have actually two and a quarter pounds here. Um, you're gonna need a diced onion. So I just have this little chopper that I diced my onion in. I'll link down below in the description box in my Amazon store. It is amazing and it's a must have. So you're gonna also need some garlic, which is a clove of garlic, which I usually do a ton. Salt and pepper, some foil to line your crock pot. One cup of breadcrumbs, one teaspoon of parsley, which is back there. <laughs> then one teaspoon of um, Italian seasoning, two eggs, half a cup of milk, fourth of a cup of ketchup, and all you're going to do is mix that together in a bowl, form it into a loaf form, and then put it onto your uh, foil that's in your crock pot. And then you're gonna cook it on low for six hours, or you can cook it on high for two to three hours. So let's do this. interesting like it smells good but oh it's super pink it is very mushy like I feel you know it's it's literally just falling apart like every bit of it is falling apart now they do recommend that you like make this i will link the recipe down below so you guys can if you want to do the do the, do the glaze but they do recommend that you put it in the oven and bake it for a little bit like for just a couple of minutes is what they say i think i need to do that but i don't know how to get this thing out <laughs> i mean it tastes really good but i'm gonna be honest and say that I feel that meatloaf is best left for the oven and not the crock pot. Especially if you're going to have to 
um, deal with this crumbliness. You see how like crumbly it is, you guys? Oh, hallelujah, it works. All right, so I just transferred over onto a baking sheet. So I'm just gonna bake this for probably about 15 minutes at 350 and we'll see how it looks. I'm actually going to hold on. I'm gonna top it with ketchup because that's just how we roll around here. We like our meatloaf with ketchup. But yeah, I would say, eh, just leave it. Leave the meatloaf for the oven and let's not, let's not do the pot pot again. That's a big no. Okay, so here's dinner. No, just no. I put it in there for 20 minutes and it's still super crumbly and super just not meatloafy. This is a huge pass slash fail for me and I'll see you guys tomorrow with our last dump and go crock pot dinner. Okay, so for our last dump and go crock pot meal, we are making chicken burrito bowls, which I'm so excited for. So what you're gonna need is one pound of chicken. I have chicken thighs. You're also going to need a can of diced tomatoes, one cup of chicken broth. Um, the recipe actually doesn't call for taco seasoning, but that's what I'm gonna use. It calls for cumin and salt and chili powder. But I figured that the taco seasoning is gonna add more flavor, so that's what I'm gonna use. Then you're also going to need a cup of corn. Recipe also calls for frozen corn. I don't have frozen corn. Um, a can of black beans, which you're going to want to rinse, drain and rinse um, before you put it in there, and then one cup of brown rice. So, what you want to do at this point is put your chicken in the crock pot, then you're going to dump in your diced tomatoes, and then one cup of your chicken broth. Here's one cup of chicken broth. You're going to put the lid on. No, actually, hold on. We also need our taco seasoning, so go ahead and season this as well. And then you're gonna wanna put the cover on, put the top on, turn it on low, cook it for three to four hours. Okay, so this has been cooking for about three hours. I'm now gonna take my uh, drained and rinsed black beans and pour that in there. My cup of brown rice. Then we also want a cup of corn. I'm gonna go ahead and drain this and then measure out a cup. All right, so here is our corn. I'm going to mix it. I'm going to mix it. Make sure that that rice is down in the liquid very well. And like I said, I'm gonna cook this for about two hours and I'm gonna come check and see how the rice is doing. If I feel like it needs more broth or anything, more liquid, I'll let you guys know like the whole process, but I am gonna come check this in two hours. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, I completely forgot about this. And I totally forgot to come check this. So fingers crossed that we're okay and that the rice is not mush. Okay, so this is our little taco boats. I just got these little flour tortilla boats at the grocery store, put in the mixture, topped it with some shredded cheese and some sour cream, and it was good to go. Okay, so this is a bonus crock pot meal. I actually wasn't intending on including this in this recipe or in this video, but I figured the last time we made it, it was so, or the last time I made it, it was so good. And I actually made it in a what's for dinner video, but I haven't done it in a crock pot video yet. So. I wanted to share, it's incredibly easy, it's not even like a quote unquote recipe, but this is just something that we're craving, or that I'm craving, and I cannot wait to eat tonight. So we're, we are making meatball subs, and all you're going to need are some frozen meatballs. I have these right here that I got from Walmart. All I'm gonna do is literally throw these into the crock pot frozen. I'm gonna add a, a jar of pasta sauce, or yeah, pasta sauce from, these are like 88 cents from Walmart, so, so simple. I'm gonna add some garlic powder, and then I'm also going to take one of these and blend it up. I might take two though, depending how much sauce I'm gonna have. So, let's go ahead and dump all of this in and get these in the blender and blend these babies up because they are peeled tomatoes, so they are whole.
So now I say this all the time when it comes to sauce, soups, stews, all that stuff. I like to cook mine for as long as possible. It is 12 o'clock, so I'm going to let it cook till about 6, so for about 6 hours, and I'll show you what it looks like. It's going to look the same exact as it does, but I'll show you, and then I'll show you the meatball subs we are so excited for, so I'll catch you in 6 hours. Okay, so it's been about six and a half hours. Do you guys see this bubbliness going on? So here is this deliciousness. I hope that you guys enjoyed this bonus crock pot recipe and enjoy it and let me know if you try it in the comment down below because oh my gosh it's about to be so good okay so the final result the meatballs of course divine delicious we even the next day the next couple of days ate pasta like i made some pasta with the meatballs and it was so incredibly good so that is something i highly highly recommend the slow cooker Olive Garden chicken pasta, that was so good. It was so flavorful and like every bite was just like a little party in my mouth. Like every bite was just like, oh my gosh, this is so good. You know those dinners that like it's so good that you can't help but keep saying how good it is? That's how this was. Unfortunately, my kids did not like this and it was very unfortunate because it made enough for an army and I was supposed to bring it to my parents' house and I never did. And I ate on it as much as I could. I ate on it a lot actually and some of it still ended up going bad, but it was so good. It was so good. So that one, I highly recommend. I don't know what it was. They kept saying it was too flavorful. So I guess my kids are a little more, like their food a little more bland. I don't know. What I think it was, was the Italian dressing. I don't think that they're huge fans of Italian dressing, so I think that's what it was that kind of threw them off. But that one was delicious. The meatloaf, meatloaf, stick to the oven. No. And as a matter of fact, I have a sheet pan recipe, or a sheet pan video. I think there was like five different sheet pan recipes. There was a recipe for mini meatloaves. Oh my gosh, it was so good. And the kids, like, when we were eating that, they were like, this is okay, but you need to make that meatloaf again. When she, I was like, I know. Like, I don't think that they'll ever like meatloaf unless it's those mini meatloaves on the sheet pan. Those came out so good. So I will link that video down below. Really great ideas, especially for the summer because they were loaded with veggies and just so like light and delicious. I mean, the meatloaf one was a little heavy, but really, really, really good. The crock pot Mississippi chicken, I liked. It was really good and it was really flavorful. However, if I'm going to try it with chicken again, I want to try it with chicken thighs versus chicken breast. I wasn't a huge fan of the chicken breast. I much prefer the beef roast but it was still good it was still flavorful not my favorite though um, but I did want to try it and a lot of you were telling me you know hey make sure you try it with chicken it's so good with chicken um, I don't eat beef a whole lot so when I do have the Mississippi pot roast I do like to kind of have it like as a treat because like I said I don't do roast a lot the slow cooker burrito bowls those were good. My kids enjoyed them. Um, it's not something that I'm like, oh my gosh, so crazy about because it wasn't anything. I feel like it was out of the ordinary for me. That's something I would totally throw together on a really busy weeknight. Usually I would do it with ground beef though. So my, did, my kids did enjoy the fact that it was with chicken, but they actually ate the beans and I was like, what? Um, I still, however, need to master how to cook rice in a crock pot without it turning to mush because the the rice was definitely mushy and I feel like it would have been much better had the rice not been so mushy. But I feel like this one is a really good meal prep idea. Um, and I would just definitely do the rice and cook the rice separately and just kind of cook the chicken. I would actually cook the chicken with the with the tomatoes and the broth and the seasoning 
and then just kind of throw the the beans and the corn in not to cook for three hours but just to kind of warm it up i think that would be a really good meal prep idea the crock pot ribs oh my gosh oh my gosh they were so good i did choose a fattier kind of rib which i think ribs are fat. i've never cooked ribs before in my life this was my first time never cooked them my ex-husband used to cook them all the time me i just never dealt with them um, they were fatty, but when you got around those fatty pieces, oh, so good. And I highly, highly, highly recommend the addition of taking your ribs from the crock pot, putting it in the oven on broil because it just like the barbecue sauce just caramelize, caramelizes and it's almost like it is on the grill. Oh, it's, it's so good. You guys have to try those highly recommend them they were so tender fall off the bone i don't even know if those had bones they had a couple but so delicious and then the tender and juicy slow cooker pork chops i am the worst when it comes to cooking pork chops i always they're always just so dry and i thought oh these nice thick beautiful looking pork chops they're not going to be that way and they're going to be so juicy and moist and tender and they were tender, but they were still really rough and really tough. So obviously I still cooked it a little too long. And it just, I don't know. I felt like it wasn't actually that flavorful. It really wasn't. It needed something else to it. And I don't know what, but it definitely left a lot to be desired. It just, it wasn't, it wasn't something I'd make again for sure, for sure. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, these recipes. All of them are going to be linked down below in the order in which I made them in. I will see you guys. I love you. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next one.